You might know that the word Lexus is an acronym for luxury export to the US. However, did you know that ES stands for executive sedan? Not so imaginative, is it? But that's how you might sum up the Lexus ES. Together with the LS400 flagship, the ES introduced the Lexus brand to the world back in 1989 and while lauded for their technical sophistication, neither was known for setting the pulse racing. And that's okay, because a mid-sized luxury sedan does not have to be exciting. But if you're trying to tempt buyers out of their BMW 5 Series, Jaguar XFs and Volvo S90s, then you're going to have to bring something more convincing to the table. Lexus knows this, which is why the all-new 7th generation ES represents a radical departure from its predecessors in styling terms. Using the company's global architecture as a base has allowed the designers to make the car longer, lower and wider. The wheelbase as well as the front and rear track have been increased, making the car look more assertive. Needless to say, the front end is dominated by the large spindle grille, but on the ES, it serves as a starting point for the car's design theme, generating lines which flow through the body and converge in the rear. Speaking of the rear, this has to be my favorite angle on the new ES. Not only does it get these beautiful LC-inspired tail lamps, but it also gets a steeply raked fastback roofline. Wait, did I say fastback? I mean coupe-like. Make no mistake, there is nothing fast about the Lexus ES. It dawdles to 100 km per hour in 8.9 seconds and the top speed is governed to 180 km per hour. That's because we're driving the ES300H, the H denoting the hybrid powertrain. While it's no robot to robot racer, employing a hybrid system does have its perks, chief of which is the low fuel consumption of 4.6 litres per 100 km. That figure is exactly on par with the BMW 520D, although the Beamer is considerably faster. The pleasure of driving this car is not derived from the speed and acceleration. It has more to do with the soft, plush surfaces that surround you, and also that almost near silence that cocoons you. There's nothing fancy about the suspension setup. McPherson's at the front, a multi-link setup at the rear, as well as dual anti-roll bars. But somehow these humble underpinnings serve up a ride quality that few rivals can match. Sure, it is not as engaging to pilot as the Jaguar XF. However, I doubt the prospective ES buyers would mind that much. They are far more likely to be partial to the quality, fit and finish and high standard of specification that Lexus is renowned for. Our test unit came with inviting semi aniline leather seats, while a unique 3D paint finish called Viscotex is applied to areas like the center armrest and door trims. I also really like the bamboo trim on the dash and door panels. It's a uniquely Japanese touch and represents a welcome break from the walnut trim you would normally find in a Lexus. On the hybrid model, you get a 17-speaker surround system, reverse camera with panoramic view, radar-equipped adaptive cruise control, and this huge 12.3-inch multimedia display. Lexus claims that it has the biggest in its segment. Sadly, it is also controlled by the most irritating touchpad in the business. Here's an interesting bit of trivia for you. The hybrid's battery pack has been relocated to under the rear seat cushion, which means it no longer impedes on the boot space. And how's this for a top trump fact? The ES comes with no fewer than 10 airbags. A BMW 5 Series only has four. So is this the car that will have buyers flogging to their nearest Lexus dealer? Well, in the case of the hybrid, possibly not. At 843,800 Rand, the ES might seem a bit expensive, even though the price is comparable to the BMW 520D we mentioned earlier on. We reckon the ES250 makes a much stronger case for itself. 
Priced at 593,300 Rand, it significantly undercuts its rivals and bear in mind, this includes a 7-year, 105,000-kilometer full maintenance plan. You don't have to use your imagination to know that that is a good deal.